So I'm going to talk about some of the tools we use for monitoring and analysis. Um, primarily, I'll talk about Open Data Kit and Google Earth Engine. Most of the sessions today are about one of these two things. Um, so hopefully through what I'm saying now, you'll be able to get a sense for what you might want to attend and what these things do. Um, we have this story that we tell of, uh, you know, from the ground to the cloud uh, monitoring analysis. So the, the ground is Open Data Kit and the cloud is Earth Engine. So I'll start with Open Data Kit. Um, Open Data Kit is a tool for uh, collecting uh, data on the ground. Um, it's a mobile data collection tool. Uh, the idea is, in the past, most people were collecting data on paper. You would go out, if you were doing a forest inventory, and collect uh, information about your trees on a big piece of paper. You'd have to carry a camera and a GPS, um, and you end up with you know, stacks and stacks of paper. Often those uh, surveys that you do end up sitting on your desk or in your file cabinet for a while before you actually get to them, and then you have to type them into a computer and analyze them. Uh, and it's hard to share the data. So uh, Open Data Kit is an open source project uh, that was started at the University of Washington and runs on Android phones. And the idea with Open Data Kit is rather than using paper and a camera and a GPS to collect information, you can just use your Android device. Um, the Android device, as we know, like a cell phone or a tablet, has the camera built in. It has a GPS in it. Um, it has barcode scanners. It has lots of the tools that you would use for data collection all kind of in one device. Uh, so you don't have to carry a bunch of different stuff around. Um, and the idea with Open Data Kit is it's, because it's on your phone or your uh, tablet, you can, if you have an internet connection or a cell phone connection, upload the data as it's being collected. And that's one of the great powers of it. So as you're collecting the data, as long as you have a connection, you, the information that you're collecting, say you're collecting uh, social, sociological information, it automatically gets uploaded to the Google Cloud um, for analysis and for data sharing. Um, there are a few parts to Open Data Kit. So there's something called ODK Collect. Um, ODK Collect is an app that runs on your device and it is used to collect uh, information. So you got into the field and you have forms on there and you enter the data into the forms. Um, the forms are very configurable and they can be managed from a central application. So uh, when you're learning about Open Data Kit, you'll be learning about how to use ODK Collect on your cell phone um, and also how to build forms. Um, the, the forms can be pretty complicated. You can have maps on there, uh, images, you can have sound, um, you can take a GPS location, and once you do all that and you hit submit, then it gets uploaded. Or if you're not near a, collect, a connection, it gets saved on your phone until you are. There are tools for building forms. So there's something called ODK Build, uh, which is a very simple interface to sort of dragging and dropping um, field forms or uh, form fields. So you can drag text fields and pull downs, um, camera, a camera so you can take pictures. Um, all that stuff can be built with this website, um, ODK Build, and then turned into a form which then gets put on phones. And the idea is that there's a full flow from collecting, from creating forms to getting them on phones to uploading the data uh, to the cloud for analysis to publishing the data on maps. So this whole kind of series of things uh, that you can do from collecting data to publishing it uh, go, works within the Open Data Kit um, sort of ecosystem of applications that you'll be learning about if you focus on Open Data Kit. Okay. Um, we've been using Open Data Kit for a number of applications. Some of them you also hear from our partners. One of the things we've been doing is working with the Surui group, uh, which you've heard from, uh, heard of, I think. Um, they are using Open Data Kit to, first of all, um, patrol their territory. So if they come across illegal logging, they can take a picture of it, and that information gets uploaded uh, and is immediately available for people to look at and then enforce if it's illegal logging. Um, and they're also using it for uh, monitoring their force for carbon credits. So they're the first indigenous group to sell carbon credits, and they gather that information using Open Data Kit. Another application, and you'll be hearing more about this from uh, Lillian Pintia, 
is uh, doing forest monitoring in, in Tanzania and for uh, monitoring and protecting chimp populations. So this is a training that we did in Tanzania in 2009 with Jane Goodall uh, and University of Washington people. Um, and you'll hear more about this, but forest rangers and, vil and uh, villagers are using it to monitor their forests. So here's a map of some of the data that's been collected with Open Data Kit. So that's collecting data uh, on the ground. That's Open Data Kit. It's the next is in the cloud. So the idea with Open Data Kit is as you're collecting the data, it, the data gets uploaded and can be used for analysis. There's lots of other analysis you can do, and that's what Google Earth Engine is for. So you heard a lot about it from Rebecca. I'm just going to summarize it and maybe give a little bit more of uh, information about it. The idea is that there's a lot of satellite data available, over 40 years worth, global data, that people can use to analyze the Earth's environment. And there are other data sources, too, that can be combined to do analyses of how the world is changing, where water is available, how crops are growing. Um, and the idea is to take all that data and put it in one place so that people can analyze it. So as much satellite data and other Earth observation data as we can, we're centralizing on our servers, putting uh, them on drives that are near computers that can do analyses, and then putting a programming interface on top so that people can uh, use the computers to analyze the data. You can upload your own data as well. Uh, as Rebecca mentioned, one of the things we've done with this is clear out clouds. So here's Indonesia. You know, eventually one of these clouds will go away, and since we have access to the, the whole archive of satellite imagery, we can um, go back in time, finding a time where there's not a cloud here. It might be five years, um, but we can go way back and find it and then use it and clear up the image, which is what we did for the base map of Google Earth and Google Maps. Now, the key to this working is the parallelization. Um, when you do something in Earth Engine, it's automatically run on lots and lots of machines. And the basic idea is, let's say you want to get rid of some clouds. You don't run that on one machine. You don't run the entire Earth on one machine, get rid of every cloud on the planet on one machine. Instead, you take your globe, and you split it up into little pieces, and you um, farm them out onto different machines. Could be hundreds of machines, could be thousands of machines. Each machine does its little bit. And then the pieces are brought back together, and then you're done. So that's the general approach. This stuff is all invisible to you. It all happens behind the scenes, as long as you're using uh, our tools or our programming interface. And here's how you use it. Um, you can go to the home page, and there we have access to the time lapse videos. So you can go look at time lapse, that animated vision of the world. Um, you can browse our data catalog, and you can also do some analyses in this on the home page. So the data catalog has uh, satellite data, it has elevation data, atmospheric data, uh, lots of other information, and this is driven by our users. So people who want a certain data source, if we're allowed to bring it in, uh, and it's generally useful, will do that. So much of the data that's in this catalog has been requested by people using it. And you can also upload your own. So if you have your own vector data or your own imagery data, you can upload it and analyze it. Um, this is an example of using the graphical user interface to do a classification. So if you take uh, the beginning Earth Engine class, you'll go through how to do this. This is a forest, non-forest map. And you can take a year's worth of satellite imagery or five years <coughs> worth of satellite imagery and do the analysis there. Um, you can also, if you want to go beyond the set of things you can do in the graphical user interface, write your own programs. So we have a code editor, and we have a programming language that you can use to analyze the imagery. And this is a picture of that code editor. Um, it's got documentation. Uh, it has a, a way of um, helping you along. So as you're typing in code, it gives you suggestions. Uh, and you can also share the code and the analysis with your friends. Um, so this is uh, uh, for people who are coding friendly, or at least interested in learning a little bit about coding, who want to do analysis. Uh, it's, in here, it's JavaScript. Um, you can also do it in Python if you're a fan of Python. Um, so currently, we have more than 6,000 people developing algorithms and methods on Earth Engine. Well, this is actually 6,000 institutions. 
Um, they're doing all kinds of things. Rebecca talked about some of them, the water monitoring application, the forest monitoring application, disease mapping. Uh, there's a whole huge range of things that people are doing with it. Uh, and it's doing quite well. Um, here's what we've done recently uh, in 2015 um, so far. I, it's a list, of, there, there are more things, but you know, certain things, if you've, if you've used Earth Engine in the past and you want just a little update, um, you know, we've done things like added export video. So if you do have a set of images over time and you want to just export that into a movie, you can. You can say, show me my town as it's changed over the last 40 years. You can export it. Um, we have lots of data, so we have HydroSheds data in there now. If you want to do uh, sort of watershed analyses, um, that data is in there. Um, we've updated the docs. So there's a new set of docs, which are very nice, um, and added a lot of support in the developer environment for people who are um, writing program. A lot of suggestions and a lot of new ways of sharing information. Uh, so that's an overview of both those tools, Open Data Kit and Earth Engine. This is a bit of a stretch, but I was wondering if ODK has the functionality to work with Google Glass should Google Glass come back. So the thing with, o with ODK, which is amazing and great, is that it's an open source project. Um, so the de development that we do it on do on it is is very limited. In fact, it's almost zero. I think um, it's other people who are building ODK. So if there is a call for Glass integration, then somebody can just grab the Open Data Kit code and add it, or we could. Uh, talk to the University of Washington people who are sort of the overseers of that project and see if they're up for doing something like that. Will uh, Skybox images be available on Earth Engine anytime? So some of the Skybox images that have been collected um, using uh, through the Skybox for Good program are available. Uh, and so um, moving forward, um, that's likely how it'll be for a little bit. And kind of like Luke said, we can't predict the future. So we'll see what happens. Um, we're working through the pipeline now. We have a lot of integration to do uh, between what Skybox was doing and, and how uh, Earth Engine and our geosystems work. Um, so it's kind of, we'll see. We'll see what happens farther along.